Hello everyone, I'm Giuseppe Neva from DualShockers.com and today I'm going to talk about Watch Dogs 2. I have tried the game extensively at Gamescom in Cologne and I had quite a lot of fun. I have to say that I'm not one of those that hated the first game, I actually enjoyed it quite a lot as well. Uh, so keep that in mind when you hear my, my, my impression. Why there is a lot of improvements that I, we have seen so far in Watch Dogs 2, uh, I don't come from that background of like absolutely disliking Watch Dogs. So uh, that's something I have to say. Also, I have to, uh, to to mention that the gameplay that you've seen that you're seeing on the screen right now it's not my gameplay. It's from Ubisoft uh, because unfortunately I didn't have a chance to record the gameplay when I was at Gamescom. So uh, first of all, uh, hacking has changed quite a lot from the first game. Um, now there is, for instance, a hacking view that makes everything like in kind of in wireframe and lets you easily spot. Uh, elements that you can hack and uh, those elements uh, you see them, them uh, like uh, with little um, colorful um, overlays on the in the word for instance if you see a a man that has some di some data that are interesting for you or that is having a conversation that is interesting for that sec uh, it will be uh, appearing uh, in color in this uh, hacking view or there you can see some data box that can open some mission and other elements um, there are also some contextual quick hacks that lets you do things very quickly without accessing a menu like for instance remotely drive cars Interestingly, as a little bit of a note about the story, we didn't see much about the story, but we did see some dialogue, uh, which is quite funny. There is quite a lot of humor. Uh, that sec is a lot less serious in this um, in this game, so uh, there is quite a bit of dry humor, and uh, I enjoyed the little bit of conversation that I've seen. There are quite a lot of tools in the new game, uh, like you have, for instance, a drone that you can send around and and use it to scout. Uh, the area around you without actually being seen. It has a very uh, much smaller signature and uh, detectability than actually Marcus, the protagonist of this game. Uh, so uh, if you go around with the drone and scout and uh, hack him or stuff like that, you can actually see a lot more without having to, uh, to um, put yourself in the line of danger. Uh, the city, by the way, is absolutely gigantic. Uh, you can also go to surrounding areas and uh, to towns around the city. So there is a lot to see. There is also a lot of diversity in the environment. I was very impressed when when I was when the the person that was giving the um, the demo actually encouraged me to uh, fly around with my drone and watch and look around uh, the city. I was like, "Wow, <laughs> this is really big." There is going to be uh, a lot to explore, a lot to do. Of course, <laughs> uh, we, you all know that uh, big doesn't mean good because we uh, will still have to see how dense and how interesting the stuff we have to do with, within the city is. But it's definitely a good beginning. Seem to be a really big area we can explore and have fun with. Uh, again, we'll have to see how fun that fun will be. But for now, uh, so far, so good. Um, one thing that really impressed me is how they changed the driving. Uh, you know, I'm a big racing game fan, uh, so uh, Watch Dog 1 um, had a quite stiff driving, uh, even compared to other games of the same genre. I'm not talking about driving games, of course, that uh, are quite difficult to actually uh, match in this kind of game, but I, I'm talking about like other open world uh, games in which there are cars. I'm not going to name names, but you know what, sh what I'm talking about. This time around, driving has been changed completely. Cars actually feel like they have physics, which is important. Uh, if you want a safe ride, uh, actually in most uh, open world game, uh, most cars f still feel too safe, even like super fast car, sports car. Uh, here, if you want a safe ride, uh, you better actually get a truck or a family car because sports cars are actually quite unstable and temperamental. Like, and especially since the, the roads here are quite bumpy, like there is a lot of up and down. Uh, if you go around on a sports car and you're not careful, uh, you're going to crash <laughs> or you're going to, uh, you're going to like have a lot of trouble. At least in the build I tried. It was very fun for me because it, I, it actually gave me some thrill while I was driving. While normally uh, in this kind of games, driving around is just a matter of going to point, from point A to point B. 
It's certainly going to make uh, police chases a lot more fun. Interestingly, if Marcus' default look it doesn't, isn't really to your taste, which is very easily because he has a very peculiar look. Uh, per, for instance, I don't really like it. I, I would never go around dressed like that. Uh, so if you don't like that, there is a ton of stores, uh, clothing stores around the city, uh, which have a ton of different styles. You can really buy it a lot of different clothes. Uh, I've seen only one shop, uh, one shop, which is the one that should be shown in the screen right now. Uh, but uh, I've been promised that there is, uh, like, like if I want to go around in a suit and a tie, I can. Which I probably will. <laughs> in, like in Watch Dogs 2, there are some off-limits areas, uh, which is most of the time stuff where there are missions and, and points of Eastern interest. Is. There, are, there are guards and there are civilians as well that will be in the way. Uh, so you will have, as usual, uh, as in Watch Dogs 1, um, approach them with either stealth or uh, with uh, using your gadgets, or even you can. Gain, you, I think you can go in gun blazing as well. Of course, it's going. It's going to be uh, more dangerous. To be honest, I didn't try uh, because I, I was directed to do it uh, the stealthy way. Uh, but uh, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be possible. I actually tried running away uh, from one of those. Um, areas uh, with people pursuing me and and there definitely was some shooting to be done interestingly the drone that you have is not the only uh, remote controlled um, little um, helper that you have you also have something that's called an rc jumper which is basically an rc <laughs> car with some little gadgets uh, built on it uh it actually can hack stuff uh, pretty much like r2d2 from star wars <laughs> and it has the little probe that enters the hackable element uh, the the port of the hackable element and it will hack the stuff i think this is actually an intentional uh cameo they they made here uh and it, it can it can also jump over obstacles which is why it's called jumper i guess <laughs> anyway um this is very useful uh, within off limits area because uh, like the the flying drone uh it you can actually avoid being spotted much easier uh because it's smaller it can be spot uh it can also be used and as an intentional distraction but um it, it definitely is uh harder for the enemies to spot it um, and uh, this is actually important when there are dogs around because dogs can actually smell you even if you, if they, even if they don't see you if you're around they can they can detect you with the, with their smell they're dogs after all uh, but uh, the RC jumper is mechanical so that it doesn't really have a smell uh, and so it's much easier to go around dogs with it um, and uh, you can also, uh, of course, uh, do distractions uh, with but the, the the RC jumper and with the um, with your own hacking skills when you infiltrate things. Uh, there are several different kinds of distractions. Uh, you can, um, for instance, hack something to attract the attention of uh, uh, the guards, or you can you can even make things explode in their faces. After you're done with the little mission, you can just escape undisturbed and uh, the mission will complete automatically. Uh, every mission you complete, or even just every successful uh, operation you do within the World of Watch Dogs, or even just taking a selfie in front of a famous monument, will gain you uh, followers. And followers are very important in Watch Dogs too, because they let you access uh, bigger operations and uh, even progress in the story. Uh, I haven't been told exactly how this works, uh, so I can't give you a, a precise uh, uh, description, but I'm guessing that some mission will require a certain minimum number of followers to be uh, accessible. Uh, one thing that's quite interesting uh, is that, like the first Watch Dogs, there is a lot of uh, online interaction within uh, Watch Dogs 2. Uh, it is a lot more extensive and it feels more natural. Like the online interaction in Watch Dogs 1, uh, it was within the world, it was kind of seamless, but it still didn't feel like it belonged there w way too, more too much here. Um, here it feels more seamless. It feels like people can just drop in into your game and you can send them an invite to uh, do co-op. You can... Form a party, uh, or you can, or they can send an invite to you as well, 
Um, so you can form up in a party, get into a car, and go look for a co-op mission for you two to uh, complete. Co-op mission, from what I've seen, are not too different from normal missions. Uh, they are, uh, of course, more difficult. Uh, there are more enemies. They are they are armed to the teeth, from what I've seen so far. And uh, they uh, they kind of require two people to work together to uh, to make it. Uh, actually, require maybe a big word. Uh, I haven't tried, but the mission I've seen kind of seemed like it could have completed by a person by himself uh, if he's really good. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but that's kind of my impression. Um, I don't know if those missions will be available if, it, if you're not in a party. So it may be actually required for you to have two people to uh, even start them. Uh, we'll have to see uh, further down the line. Anyway, it's very nice to be able to actually combine uh, hacking with two people. Like one person can cover uh, the other person from the sky with the drone. Or you can just uh, like kind of uh, hop uh, over each other. Like one person goes in and... Uh, and hacks the security, then the other person goes in further a little bit and uh, hacks a little more uh, And while the first person covers him. Uh, there is also a lot of non-lethal ways to attack. You can either do a takedown or you can uh, use a, a non-lethal stun gun. Uh, I've been told that there are other ways to do it as well. Uh, you can put traps, you can put mines. Uh, there is a lot of div uh, of different uh, variables you can use to uh, try to hack. There is a lot of freedom, uh, so it's it's very well made. At least the mission I made was very nice. Uh, I have to say I played with the with the developer on the other side, so of course he knew what to do. Uh, and the person giving the the um, the demo actually gave me a lot of instructions. So I actually looking forward to try with uh, a non developer companion that will. Uh, kind of makes mistakes maybe and I will be allowed to make mistakes as well so it may be a lot of fun to like kind of uh, go in and explore what you can do with the other person when the other person is hasn't like run the demo a million times <laughs> so he, he knows exactly what to do and how to react uh, I actually I have to say I, I've tried to screw up a little bit quite intentionally so yeah as it went uh, but in the end we completed the mission successfully um, but there is something interesting because uh, there is also a PvP mode that was introduced at Gamescom for the first time, uh, which, is called, which is called Bounties. Uh, basically, you can uh, trigger bounty uh, either by being uh, wanted or uh, I think you can trigger it manually as, as well. Like there was a way in the demo that we tried to trigger the bounty manually. But ma bounty manually. I'm not sure if this will be in the final game. Uh, it may have been part of the demo because they just needed to, you know, demonstrate it. But anyway, uh, well, I, this is another thing that we'll have to see uh, when the game is complete. The bounty one was actually quite hectic uh, because what happens is that the, there is either uh, three against one, which is like two, uh, three uh, people hunting the person that is uh, hunted. Uh, and the hunters will basically are basically bounty hunters and will have to work with the police to uh, take down the person that is running away. Uh, either way, there is could, there could be like two people in a party and two people helping the police. Uh, of course, uh, one is a little bit more difficult than the other for the one hundred person. If you have like three people on you, that that becomes really difficult to actually escape. Uh, if you don't like, um, if you have like uh, someone helping you, it can kind of distract uh, the hunters and it gets a little easier. Uh, I have to say that um, in, in this case, a lot of hacking uh, works really well because you can actually hack the car of the person uh, that's running, either running away or the person that is uh, pursuing you. Uh, it's actually, if you're, if you're running away, it's actually easier to hack cars in front of you. Uh, you can kind of make cars in front of you swerve to the, to the side and it will get into, in the way of cars uh, that are pursuing you. Um, that said, is actually quite difficult to run away if you if uh, the hunters are on the ball because they can hack your car, and if you can't drive in a straight line, <laughs> it gets really hard. Uh, from what I've seen, there is no way to actually defend 
from a hack, the only thing you can do is try to control your car uh, when uh, it's swerving around and it's being controlled by the other thing. So you, you kind of have to count to like compensate for the hacks uh, and it's challenging, especially in traffic. <laughs> and especially if you have a very fast car, as I told you, uh, sports cars are not very stable like real sports car. Well, the, the, I don't know how realistic the driving model is, but still they are not uh, easy to tame. So if you also have someone uh, that's messing with your controls, uh, obviously it gets very hard. So maybe it can be better to uh, get into a little slower car, but that you can control more easily. I have to say that um, there is a little bit of a, I noticed a little bit of a flow for the moment in this uh, gameplay, uh, which is that uh, the initial conditions uh, count a lot. Like uh, if you are quite far uh, from the hunters and you have a little bit of lead, uh, lead time to get away uh, from the start, it's very, very difficult for the hunters to actually uh, manage to catch you. Uh, because they have a massive uh, disadvantage at the beginning. If you are quite close, on the other hand, um, it can get very hairy for the one running away, uh, just because uh, you have no time to put some lead time in front of you, and when they start hacking your car, uh, managing to actually get away is really hard. Like, there, there were times, we, we tried multiple times, and there were try times in which I absolutely easily, against the same people, uh, I absolutely easily got away, and there are times in which the person that was running away, at, like, really didn't have any chance uh we'll have to see if uh, ubisoft will refine this thing a little more because at the moment again the initial conditions seem to be a little too uh unbalancing one way or the other depending on what you have that's it the 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 functionality is actually a lot of uh, very interesting and has a lot of potential if it gets well balanced ultimately i have to say that i had a lot of fun playing Watch Dogs 2 for like 40 minutes I was given to play it. I was probably like closer to an hour uh, between the free room and the bounty hunt uh, demo. Uh, but I really like it and uh, I think it has a lot of improvements uh, over Watch Dogs 1, which I already liked. Uh, but uh, if you maybe did not like the first too much, uh, you could uh, consider giving this one a better uh, another chance uh, because it might actually deserve it. Uh, personally, I think it is a very much of a uh, good step in the right direction uh we'll have to see how this progresses but so far really so good um it, of course it will be important to see how the story is how the characters are so far they seem interesting uh but of course the story is a pretty important part of the game uh the first game uh was a little weak on the story even if, if i did not dislike iron pierce i maybe like one of the uh 20 people in the world that did not dislike Iden Pierce, uh, but uh, I actually liked him quite a bit. Uh, maybe I like you, the dark, uh, moody, broody uh, hero, but still. Um, we'll have to see the, if the, character, the characters in this game have potential, how the story unfolds and everything. But so far, at least the free roam part is really fun. And uh, I really like the driving. I really like the hacking, how it works, how it feels intuitive. Uh, so I definitely give this a thumbs up for now. We'll have to see how it progresses. And I ho really hope that this time around uh, the game will manage to uh, be successful with the broader audience because the first one, of course, wasn't, wasn't universally uh, acclaimed. Uh, personally, uh, I have my hopes up. Uh, we'll have to see, and uh, of course, uh, you'll have to judge for yourself when the game comes out. So far, uh, I'm my curiosity is very much peaked. Uh, we'll see. For the moment, I think I've blabbered around way too much already. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening, and uh, have a great weekend. Bye.